Hello YouTubers. So here is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S Wi-Fi 5.0. Before I start, um, just to let you know if you're interested, I'm actually going to swap the audio over from the Panasonic to what I'm recording with my LX3000 headset through Audacity, only because I'm hoping it will give me a slightly better audio quality. So if you're interested, that is what I've done for this video. Here is the Galaxy S Player Wi-Fi 5.0 compared to the iPod Touch just to let you see what the um, displays are like um, and the comparison of the size okay first of all we'll have a look around the device on the top here we have the SD card slot and the lanyard hook hole on this side there's nothing on this side on the bottom we have the micro USB slot for the charger and for connecting it to your computer. You also have a mic hole there and the 3.5mm jack socket there. Now apparently these two have screws underneath them and if you need to change the battery out then you can by undoing these. I would suggest that if you've still got your warranty and you have battery problems that you contact Samsung and allow them to do it so that you don't have any problems void in your warranty because I don't actually know if that would void your warranty if you change the battery yourself. So on this side we have the power on button and the volume rocker. On the back we have the 3.2 uh, megapixel camera lens with the flash. We have a speaker grill there and another speaker grill here and that's it. On the front we have the speaker grill there and the front facing camera and then here we have the physical home button, uh, the settings button and the return button there. Plus you have the 5 inch screen. What I'm going to do is show you what YouTube is like, Twitter and the browser. I'm not going to use Facebook because of the names that are on there. I don't really want to show them in public so I won't show you Facebook this time. But I will go into Twitter and YouTube. What I am going to show you is this little email that I got from Samson. Now, when I first got this device, I thought I'd be able to upgrade it to gingerbread. But then after I bought it, I realised that the UK version doesn't have an official update. So I contacted Samsung and I said to them, are you going to be releasing the gingerbread update for the UK device? And they wrote back to me saying this. Dear Chris, thank you for contacting Samsung. Unfortunately, we have no timeline as to if or when Gingerbread will be released for this MP3, MP4 player. I don't think it will be released. However, if it is released, it will be made available via our Samsung Care suite. This is available to download, etc, etc. So what they're saying is, at the moment, they don't know whether it's going to be released for the UK version this person seems to think that it isn't at the moment but if it is then it will be released use you know i'll be able to upload it through the samson suite now i've got to say i was a little bit disappointed with that considering that if i was in the us i could buy this from the shop and it would come with 2.3.5 readily installed on it straight away out of the box now why the uk version doesn't have that I don't know and I've got to say it is a little bit annoying because it does mean that some of the apps that you want to install onto this device might not work because it might not work with the 2.2.2 firmware instead of the 2.3.5 which is a bit annoying so there you go let's have a look at YouTube so here we have the YouTube app and this is what it looks like when you first go into it. Um, I'm going to choose a shorter video to see if it works better. It seems to take a little bit longer with the longer videos, but there you go. Now, I'm not really sure if you're going to be able to hear this very well. Here is the optimized 720p setting. It's starting to get dark outside. It actually looks darker outside than it does in this video. Now, if you rotate it... Then you get the full screen and it does look pretty good. The sound is pretty good as well, especially if you put the headphones in. Now I have read that the gingerbread update does affect the sound, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But there you go, that's the YouTube app which seems to have loaded quite nicely. Now let's go and look at Twitter. So here you have Twitter. Just 
pull that down to update and it goes pretty much straight away which is pretty good um, obviously it's more dependent on what kind of signal strength you get the fact that I've got quite good signal strength up here is pretty good but then most Android devices work pretty well up here anyway that's Twitter so now let's go into Google and I do I must say I prefer the keyboard on this to the Sony Ericsson but then the Sony Ericsson I had wasn't working properly so that's probably why it'd be better now it does give you this option to go to internet or YouTube if I press on internet sometimes it comes up with the uh, YouTube app sometimes it comes up with the actual um, desktop version now the pinch to zoom is pretty good I would say quite nicely responsive even though it's got a screen guard on it which I think is pretty good the one of the weird things is with the flash player it doesn't work straight away you actually have to tap on it in order for it to start working and as you can see there it is working quite nicely so there you go so that's the internet browser the Wi-Fi does seem to work pretty well on this device which I quite like various other different apps there now let's have a look at the Play Store loads up quite nicely obviously this is the Google Play instead of the Android market they've updated it recently I think I've actually got some updates for my device which I shall probably install later on but as you can see it does work quite nicely and it flows quite nicely as well oh I've got an Adobe Flash update I'll do that later so there you go that's the internet side of it now let's have a look a quick look at the camera so here's the camera app now you can't have it in portrait mode which is a little bit annoying there's the camera app now on the camera part of it you do have a front facing camera which I think is pretty good you know yep so that's the front facing camera now uh, I would like to take some video with this hold on a minute I can't now whether that's changed in gingerbread or not I don't know but you can't do it with the 2.2.2 so that is a little bit annoying here are the resolutions okay it's not HD but then to be honest with you I don't really need HD for me uh, the one thing I do like is the fact you've got a panorama on it which I think is pretty good um, as far as the stills are concerned they're pretty they're okay uh, as far as the video is concerned I will put some separate videos up so that you guys can see what it's like um, I won't tag them to the end of this because otherwise this video will be well long. So there you go. That's my quick look look, look around the Samsung Galaxy S um, Wi-Fi 5.0. Battery life. I get about two and a half days worth of medium use out of it. And about um, a day's worth of heavy use out of it. At the end of the day I end up with 20% about um, before I go to bed at night. Which I think is pretty good. For what I want to do with it. It does do quite a good job. Accessories. I got myself this case. For about a fiver off eBay. I'll put a link in the description. So that you guys can get one if you want. If you're interested. It is quite a nice one. It's black. It just gives it that little extra bit of protection. I've also got a screen guard on it as well. Just to sort of keep it as protected as possible so that it will last a bit longer as far as accessories in the box are concerned it came with a charger and a USB lead and a set of headphones here's the box just if you're interested now I use um, Launcher Pro just because I prefer to use Launch Pro Launch Pro seems to work quite nicely on this I, I did have problems with Launch Pro on Sony Ericsson but on this it seems to work quite nicely so that's pretty good because I have been going away more than usual um, and I'm due to sort of go away a bit more in the next coming months what I wanted to have was um, a little bit more protection for the my Galaxy player um, I didn't really want to just shove it in uh, in my suitcase just to be floating around with belt buckles and shoes and stuff like that so I had a look on the internet for a little case and there wasn't really any that I could find so I had a look at things that were about the same size and I came across this now this is a hard drive case for a mini 
portable hard drive. Now as you can see, the Galaxy S player fits really nicely in there. Now I'll put a link to this in the description. It was only about a fiver from Tesco's Direct. There's the USB leads. You've got this nice little zippy bit here. You can't put the charger in, which is a little bit disappointing. But then this can go in another bag by itself anyway, so that's no biggie. And as you can see, there's also a little strap there to help hold it in. And you just zip it up and then you can chuck that in your suitcase and not have to worry about it getting scratched up or anything like that. It's also got a little belt clip there so you could put it on your belt if you were that way inclined. It just gives a little extra protection um, for when you're traveling. So I thought that was quite a nice little purchase. That's the accessories. What are my general feelings towards the Galaxy S player? I like the size of the screen. I think the size of the screen is really good. Um, I've been using this a lot since I got it and I haven't really used my iPod Touch for internet since then. As far as I'm concerned, this is a lot better. The screen size does make a huge difference. The fact that it's got flash player as well makes a big difference as well. The Wi-Fi connection is pretty good in my bedroom, which I quite like as well. Um, and the battery life is a lot better than the iPod Touch. The only thing that does disappoint me is the fact you can't record with the front-facing camera and also the fact that for the UK, I can't officially upgrade this using the, the Samsung software. If I could upgrade it and Gingerbread did actually make the battery life better and the camera better, then I would think that would be a worthwhile upgrade. But at the moment, I sort of feel that this is doing its job. Um, okay, there are a few apps which haven't worked because of the 2.2.2 firmware. Um, it's not a deal breaker, so I am quite happy with this as an internet device. There is a new version of this coming out, which has got a dual-core processor and a 5 megapixel camera. There's also a 4.2 version of it, which is coming out. Both have the gingerbread firmware on it. That is the only thing that disappoints me about this is the fact that I can't upgrade it to gingerbread without rooting it or putting a custom ROM on it. And the reason I don't is because I don't want to avoid the warranty um, and I don't want to risk bricking it either. So maybe when the warranty runs out I might give it a go. If I find out that the battery life is drastically improved then I might actually do it. But for now I'm quite happy with the way things are. So there you go, that's my little look around the Samsung Galaxy S Wi-Fi 5.0. I think if you are interested in this, then I would say it might be worth holding on to see what the upgrade of this is like. Um, mainly because of the fact, especially if you're in the UK, not being able to update it to the gingerbread might be a deal breaker for you. So I would suggest hold off until the new version comes out which has got a dual core processor and a better camera and that might actually be more worthwhile but i would say this is quite a nice device um, it does do good internet quite well and if you're interested in a device to um, replace your ipod touch as far as in the internet is concerned this is a worthwhile purchase okay that's enough for me hope you've enjoyed this video hope you're having a good day and i'll do some more later on okay bye bye for now